All right, so I had the pleasure of coming to the Science Slam last year to support one of my fellow graduate students, and we kind of got this little nickname. Um, so people started calling us the unruly sociologist. And I never thought that something that I had been scolded for as a child, being a little unruly, a little talkative, a little outgoing, a little unconventional, could be something that I identified with so strongly as an adult. So, in true unruly sociologist form, I'm gonna introduce myself like this. And I have a lot of audio, so here's hoping it goes okay. Is it on? Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. So I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there. I'll tell you how I became the UNL Science Slam winner. <laughs> oh, it's so quiet. In North Carolina, I was born and raised in the classroom is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool and all practicing with math counts after the school went a couple of times. I was up to no good. I started making trouble for old Mr. Wood. I went to detention once and my mama got scared. She said, you're packing up your stuff and you're becoming a bear. I showed up at Wake and the first thing I hear is you better have that periodic table near. I could already tell this was something to fear. So I yelled to my soci, go home to board here. I pulled up to Nebraska at about 24 and I could already tell what my journey was for. I looked at my department and was finally here to hang with my pal and show the world that we care. <clears throat> so, so there's a little bit about me, but I kind of want to start the story even earlier. So at five or so, if you ask me what I wanted to be when I grow up, I would tell you that I wanted to be a babysitter during the day and I wanted to bake cookies for firefighters at night. <laughs> right, so the gender norms were pretty strong with this one. <laughs> but soon after that, I got into school and we started to learn about science. And it was something that I thought was really fascinating. I'm sorry, I move a lot. And beyond that, scientists were really fascinating, right? Because they're these people that we look up to. They're intelligent, they're powerful, they're smart, they're respected. But unfortunately, as an elementary school kid, a scientist meant someone working in a lab with a lab coat, doing some, some of these physical sciences that we think about. And I wasn't sure how that worked for me. And so in elementary school, I really started to um, become interested in animals. Specifically, my nickname from my father is monkey. And so naturally, my favorite animal is a monkey. And so I decided that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be a zoologist. I wanted to study primates the next Jane Goodall. But as I got through elementary school and got into middle school, I realized maybe this wasn't such a good idea. And there's a couple reasons for this. One, I don't like being outside, which is kind of a problem. <laughs> Two, I really hate being around bugs. Three, I don't want to sleep anywhere other than my bed. And four, and this is the most important part, I'm not an animal person, <laughs> right? And I mean, oh my God, shock, awe, ah, right? Because this is something that is so central to some people's personalities, and that's not me. So maybe it's time to reevaluate what I'm gonna be when I grow up, right? And so, as you heard in the rap, I was on a math team. Let's me real, I was the captain of the math team <laughs> in eighth grade, and I was taking algebra at the time, and I loved it, and I was good at it. And so I thought, that's what I'll do. I'll be a mathematician. Okay, but think back to when you were in eighth grade. Did you know what mathematicians do, <laughs> right? I still am not positive if I know exactly what mathematicians do. And so once I got into high school, I started working at a daycare. And so I was working with children and I realized this is something that I really like. I love being around kids and I really care about their well-being. So then how do I combine science with my love for children? And so pediatrics, right? I become a doctor, I'm a pediatrician and that's what I should do. So then, Fast forward to college, and I walk in my first day of college, 8 a.m. to a chemistry class. And I realized I'm not very good at chemistry either, right? And so scientists are good at different things. People are good at different things. We have our own skills. So then I had to change again. And I was taking psychology courses at the time, and I realized that psychology was very interesting to me. I liked it. And my senior year, I started taking a statistics course, and I loved it. 
but not everybody in my class loved it. And so we had a lot of conversations that kind of went like this. <laughs> I think it's very vital to read more than the title. It's easy, see, just X times B, I find it quite delightful. They say it's tricky to solve a line, to solve a, to solve a line of regression. It's tricky, 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 tricky. It's tricky to solve a line, to solve a line, to solve a line of regression. It's tricky, 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 ugh. So, here we go. This kind of, so again, I realize this is something that I like, this is something that I'm good at, that I'm good at, excuse me, and more importantly, this is something that nobody else wants to do, so hello. <laughs> Here's a great job, right? So my senior year of college, I started taking um, methods courses. And because I'm a glutton for punishment, I took methods in psychology and sociology at the same time. And while psychology is very important and interesting and I like it, I realized that I was a sociologist. What? It was, <laughs> there were questions that I wanted to answer and they fit better into a sociological framework. So I went and I got my master's in sociology and it was great, but I was working a full-time job and working for the university and going to school. And so basically I was just doing my coursework. And then I got to Nebraska, <laughs> which is not a place I, would ever, I thought I would ever be. But I walked in and I met my fellow graduate students and I met the faculty here and I realized that I can explore all of my research interests. I can use my mathematical, my analytical side and really answer the questions that are important to me. So, science slammers, my research mistake lasted a long time. <laughs> but there are a couple major things that I want you to take away from this. So number one, never try to fit yourself into a box that somebody else created. We're all unique and we all have our own purpose in the world. Number two, never think that something that you're good at and you're passionate about won't be valued by other people. And the third one relates to events like this. So embrace the abilities in other people, understand that we all have our own purpose, and come out and support one another. So I'm gonna leave you with this. So <laughs> quiet. Yo, UNL. <laughs> Let's kick it. Science slam, baby. Science slam, baby. All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. Call is here and I want your attention. Science grabs a hold of me tightly. Come up with projects daily and nightly. Will it ever stop? Yo, I don't know. Boot up the mat and I'll show. To the extreme, I'll run stats like a vandal. Other universities can't hold a candle. Astronomy to learn about the moon. Biology studying poisonous mushrooms. Physics to learn about velocity. Anything less would just be an atrocity. Love it or leave it, you better make way. Scientists are here and we're here to say, if you got a problem, yo, we'll solve it. Listen up, son, while the earth just revolves it.